We have officially made it to Vermont. We in it. New state. We did it. So far, I am pretty impressed. As soon as we entered, it essentially just became mountains and we've just been driving through mountains for the past hour or so. Along the way, there's hardly anything. It's such a small state, I thought everyone would kind of be like huddled together, but it's so sparse. There's beautiful winding rivers and of course, you know, the mountain views everywhere. It has been lovely so far. Well, somehow we ended up down a one lane dirt road track here, trying to get to our campsite for the night. It's times like this when I'm very glad that we have the off-road camper and an off-road truck. <laughs> you know, just in case we get into a pickle. But I don't love that we don't have any signal and I have no idea if this is accurate or anything. There's no way to double check. What really makes us nervous is there's no turnout. If somehow we get stuck, how the hell do you back up the camper? We're stuck. Oh man, some of these roads are pretty intense, man. <laughs> we might end up needing the four wheel drive for this, holy cow. This is Allison, your hip camper for the night. Camper for the night. We just got one bar of soda, so I just wanted to call. Yeah. Emsley Road, I guess? Is... No, 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 no. County Road. Stay on the county road. Do not go to Elmsley. All right, unfortunately, I think I'm already on that road. You're going to take the scenic route, it's okay. All right, confirmed, we're not supposed to be here, but it's okay that we're here, I guess. He was oh, like, whatever you do, do not get on Emsley Road. And I'm like, we're already smack in the middle of it. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah, as long as we can get up this hill here, I think we're good, because we should be pretty close. That's what this truck and trailer are for, right? I think we made it. I think our host sees us and is coming to help us out. <laughs> Woo wee, that was exciting. <laughs> all right, so I have to basically do a three or four point turn here and then back it all the way up there. <laughs> I'm gonna let Eric do this. I'm getting much better backing up, but maybe not quite that good yeah, today. It's not that difficult, but it's a long way to back up. <laughs> okay, good job, love you. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> was that fun? I thought you were just so mad at me the whole time. Anyways, good evening adventurers. I don't think we've said that yet. <laughs> and welcome to Vermont. Well, good morning, y'all. Good morning. Man, it got cold last night. It dipped into freezing and we didn't think it was going to. Yeah, in and, the uh, upper 20s in yeah. our... Uh, Water pipes froze just a little bit. They got a little slushy. Well, our pipes didn't actually freeze because they're slightly insulated. Right. But the, the hose there froze. So it's our first experience with like turning on the water and nothing comes out. <laughs> Very quickly, the sun came out and warmed it up. It's, it's getting in that weird time of fall where it's freezing at night, but it's in the 60s during the day. So you don't know, do I need to wear a parka or a tank top? But yeah, it's just a hint of what's to come if we stay in this cold part of the country. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have to start dealing with, uh, you know, frozen water lines and snow and all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah. This is actually just some guy's private land that was on hip camp, but it is a very awesome spot. And we'll link to it in the description below. Also, pretty much every RV park and campsite has shut down for the season. So this is kind of uh, all there is. So extra nice that there's hookups. Anyways, we are smack in the middle of Vermont. So we're gonna branch out and see what the state has to offer. How are you? Did that just make your day? Yes, of course. Any <laughs> any animal that comes to me is my favorite thing in the entire world. We're not getting a dog. Not yet. Are you sure? Maybe one day. <laughs> we made it to Vermont's capital. It is Montpelier. You know, the first time I ever heard about this city was in this old commercial. I think it was a Cheerios commercial that used to play, I think back in the 90s. Give me a tough one. Vermont. Montpelier. <laughs> But I was a little kid like the kids were in the commercial, and I always wondered, will I ever go to Montpelier? And here I am! <laughs> okay, but other than the name, what else is unique about this city? Uh, well, it is the smallest capital city in the entire USA, complete with the smallest capital building in the entire USA. This is the smallest? Yeah, it's actually pretty it's big in huge. real life. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. I guess they do capital buildings pretty big in the US. <laughs> is 
so charming. All these buildings are so old and so well preserved. It feels like you're stepping back in time. There's tons of little cute shops and cafes. We found this adorable little bakery coffee shop, so we had to stop in for a little breakfast and coffee. Dude, we got a nice spread here. I Man, know. I feel like I'm in Italy or something. Any good? Ooh, ooh, that is strong. Normally I'm a latte girl, and Eric has got me on the cortado train. Ooh, it's an they, acquired taste. Yeah, they can be a little bitter sometimes. Oh, cheers. Cheers. It'll get you going. Stay awake. <laughs> You guys know we've been collecting magnets from every state. We got our work cut out for us with the, with Vermont though. Yeah, these are some of the best I've seen. They're really classy, they're not horribly tacky. I am leaning towards this one because it's very elaborate. <laughs> Let's see that. It's so rad, it seems so like vintage. All right, I'm in. This better mean that we're about to see some moose. Oh yeah, we're definitely seeing moose before we leave this state. <laughs> Guys, we found a giant granite zipper. It doesn't seem to be working though. Not sure what's wrong with it. I think it might be jammed. <gasps> I think your brain might be jammed. Me? We made the super quick drive over to the town of Barrie to see North America's largest zipper. Although I'm pretty sure it's probably the largest zipper in the entire world. Maybe there's another zipper somewhere in some other country. Somebody Let else made a zipper larger than a than this. Then a kudos to you. <laughs> this town is actually known for its granite production, which is what this zipper is made out of. And it's really cool to walk through the town and see all of the sculptures made out of the granite. But we want to go to the source. This is the Rock of Ages Quarry, which is about 10 minutes outside of Perry. But it is something you must see when you're in the area because it is so freaking grand. They've been pulling granite out of here for over 100 years, I think. It's crazy. What's really neat is that there's this deep green-blue pool at the bottom of the granite. We actually have a tour guide who's taking us around. And he said that the reason for that is that they take the water from this pool here, then they use it to keep the dust down when they cut the granite. Then it shoots out of this little hole right there. So it's just the dust from the granite that's mixed in with the water. That's what's making it blue like that. They call it glacier colored water, right? Yeah. Oh, and it sure is confirmed. It's glacier yeah, colored. It's incredible. I'll give you guys a chance to guess just how deep down this granite goes. Any, any guesses? <laughs> it's 10 miles deep. 10 miles of granite straight down. And they said it'll take them 4,500 years to mine all the granite out of here. So there's plenty of granite to go around, I guess. <laughs> you guys, they have a granite bowling alley. Let's see how I do. Holy! Nope. About how I normally do. All right. <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. It's all about the form. Should I do a proper run up to it? I don't know. Well, you're the expert. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna do it. <gasps> First time granite bowling. That was a freaking rubber ball. Strike. Strike. This bowling lane was built in the 50s. They were experimenting with granite. They said to put on cruise ships for their bowling lanes. I don't know why. Apparently the granite was so strong it would break the bowling balls. <laughs> so it didn't really work out. This granite has been here since the 50s and it is perfectly preserved and pristine. They haven't had to do anything to this. That's crazy. <laughs> this is what I think of your dumb granite bowling. Thing probably everyone knows Vermont for is the maple syrup. So we had to come to a maple farm. This is the Morse farm. And y'all, this is the huge machine they use to boil down their sap and make maple syrup. We hear it's quite a crazy process. Sadly, it only takes place in the spring, so we are quite out of season. But to get one of these gallon jugs of maple syrup, it takes 40 gallons of sap. I had no idea. That's so much sap that you have to boil down for this little guy. Y'all, meet the creamy. This is Vermont's version of soft serve. It is essentially just soft serve ice cream, but I guess it's creamier with a higher fat content, so they call it creamy, C-R-E-E-M-E-E. -E -E. <laughs> This one is very special because it is maple flavored 
with maple dust on top. I'm so intimidated by this, it's so huge. Okay, I think I go top first, side? Right on the top, okay. that's how you do it, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how oh you do it. Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna have to go to the dentist after this. It's so good. Maple dust on top, it's magical, just pure magic. And it's not overwhelmingly like sweet or mapley. It's so perfect and subtle and it's so creamy. Now let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like waiting over there like, okay, stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so this is the world's smallest Capitol building. Oh, we got confused. <laughs> Google got Maps it. took it to the wrong spot. <laughs> Turns out it's here at the Morse farm. Why do they have a model of the Capitol? It's really well done too. I mean, <laughs> cool. it's fantastic. <laughs> We've been playing this awesome Sherlock Holmes game. It's a lot of fun. You get to go all over London back in the 1800s and try to figure out who done it. Usually there's a murder involved. <laughs> but we got to plan this game accordingly because it takes us like two hours plus to play it, mainly because we're so bad at it. Which kind of puts a damper on our plans because you guys know that we like to make like full on meals in our kitchen when we can. But we have a little time saving hack for just this situation. This box of deliciousness is from Factor. And in fact, they are sponsoring today's video, so we wanted to give them a huge thank you for supporting the channel. Their meals arrive pre-prepared and they're ready to eat in about two minutes, which is awesome for us because you guys know when we arrive to an awesome campsite, we don't always want to just start cooking. We want to get out there and explore. Or in tonight's case, waste hours playing Sherlock Holmes. What we love about Factor is that they are delivered fresh. They are never frozen, baby. All you have to do is heat and eat. Should that be their slogan? Is that their slogan? Well, you can have that factor, that's freebie. You can pop these meals in the oven if you're so inclined, but you can also just microwave them if you wanna save time. It's ready. And just like that, two minutes later, I have a delicious salmon dinner. As usual, Factor is hooking y'all up with a sweet discount. So if you head to go.factor75.com slash EndlessAdventures60 and use the code EndlessAdventures60, you'll get, you guessed it, 60% <laughs> off your first Factor box. We join Wiggins, Holmes, and Watson for an evening of relaxation and newspaper reading. <laughs> it's been an hour since 221B Baker Street went as far as... We made a pretty stupid error yesterday, y'all. When we came back in after our jog to our camper, it kind of smelled a little bit like diesel. <laughs> we were a little concerned about it. So we're like checking the heater and all this stuff, making sure nothing's going wrong. It turns out we left the cap off of our little diesel heater fuel tank and it was splishing and splashing all over the place, got all over the walls, got all over the bottom of it, <laughs> made a big diesel mess down there. There's so many little things that you have to remember to do when you're setting everything up and tearing it all down, refueling, that it's really easy to forget something. <laughs> but we won't be making that mistake again. Mark my words, or don't, you know better than that. I was about to say, words. there's a lot of things we're having to learn lately. Don't lock your keys inside. Don't leave your cap off, your diesel. I feel like we have to learn things twice anyway, so it'll happen again. We have officially made it to New Hampshire. We're doing it. I was just trying to think of what number state this is. Yeah, 10, I don't remember. 12, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> but everywhere we've been going, we've been seeing so many moose crossing signs and just some signs that just say moose. Are we going to see a moose? We freaking better. I mean, they say there's signs everywhere. It's getting closer to sunset. We probably won't see them at sunrise because let's face it, we don't get up that early. But we're going to be up in the Northeast for a couple weeks. So we better have a moose sighting soon or I want my money back on all of the diesel that I paid to get out here. <laughs> What do you think about this campsite? I guess that'll do. Yeah. Right? That's an okay view. Not bad at all. <laughs> so that is Mount Washington. And we have it all to ourselves tonight, <laughs> apparently. This is our mountain. Yeah. And, you know, this guy's. <laughs> Man, Harvest House, keep coming through with the yeah. awesome views. This is rad. But we're not here just to camp. There's a special reason we're here, and it involves a really fun way to get to the top of that mountain. But not tonight. Not it tonight. is way too late and chilly. So save that for tomorrow. Well, good morning, y'all. We are about to summit the tallest mountain in the Northeast. And we're gonna do it with our legs. Just kidding. <laughs> we're gonna do it on this thing. <laughs> 
How adorable. Yeah, because we're really lazy. And this seems way cooler, right? Anyone can walk, but not everyone can take a rail railroad. Dang. Let's just go. Yeah, let's do it. Top, or well, almost to the top. It's way too cold and cloudy up there to go all the way. So yeah. we're at Wombat so we Didn't Station. quite summit. I know. <laughs> but apparently this started going in the 1800s and they invented this cog railway specifically because somebody hiked the mountain, got to the top. The next day it was so pretty. They were like, we have to be able to get back up here easier. So he invented this train. And it's really funny when you stand in the middle of it, you're like completely slanted awkwardly. It just looks really bizarre. So the way it works is it's a normal train track, but there's an extra line in the middle that's grooved so that a big cog in the middle of the train can go into the grooves and help pull the train up the mountain. They used to take these little things called slide boards down the tracks. Look at this guy. This is how they would do it. <laughs> this guy would literally sit on this piece of board and then go flying down there. Apparently you could get him going pretty dang fast and uh, somebody went a little too fast and so they don't really allow those anymore. When this route first started, it was not as quick or efficient as it is today. It was actually started with a wood powered steam engine and they would have to make multiple stops on the way to reload with wood and water to make it all the way to the top, which by the way, would take up to six hours. Six hours just to get from here to the top of that summit. It's just right there. <laughs> and a whole pile of wood and a whole bunch of water. Yeah. And of course, nowadays they go a heck of a lot faster. And by a heck of a lot faster, she means about five miles an hour. And they build all these locomotives on site. They have their own warehouse down there where they build them, repair them, they do it all here. They're just stunning trails all over this area and there's one that we have our eye on right down there that we're gonna take a peek at before we leave. I think it's gonna be like proper whimsical fairyland. Oh yeah, and I know it's unseasonably warm and y'all normally have snow here right now, but I am not upset that it is not here. We are taking advantage of this warm fall. Narnia, here we come. <laughs> Well, this isn't too bad at all, you guys. None at all. So we just came across this incredible rushing stream that just looks like a fairy tale or something. Well, this is officially one of the most fun and interesting hikes we've done. They've come up with some really innovative ways to get across things here. <laughs> oh, this is super cool. <laughs> I mean, does it get any more picturesque and serene than this? I don't even understand. I've never seen a forest like this. You guys, this is Marcus and Gentry, and they are viewers of ours, and they stopped by to say hi. You guys, hi guys. went up the, the Cog Trail, right? We went up the Cog Trail. We really, we really enjoy the channel. Yeah, uh, I love watching you guys tear apart the camper. That was so much fun. <laughs> well, we thank really you. Sorry that we're not in the camper right now. We're in the Black Series, know. but you know, at least it gets us around. <laughs> well, hopefully it'll be on the road soon. Yeah. We, oh, we, we hope so. Well, thanks for sticking with us through all of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of ups and downs, as you guys know. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for stopping by and saying yeah, hi. <laughs> Well, we found a really cool harvest host last night. It's just this little local market, and uh, we were able to just park over on the side, and it's actually right next to this really cool wooded area. So we were able to open our door and just have the woods right in front of us. And we woke up to quite a surprise. Somebody's doing wood-fired barbecue in the parking lot. And if my <laughs> nose is not mistaking me, it's going to be delicious, and I think we're gonna have to get some. We ended up getting a full pound of brisket. <laughs> Maybe that's too much for us, but we're gonna no, try it. That but we're actually gonna save this for later because we have a local New Hampshire dish that we are about to go try. So we ended up coming to this adorable little town called North Conway to this amazing Irish pub called May Kelly's because we were on a mission to find this, which is a boiled meat dinner. 
You know, the name isn't too enticing, but it looks better than I thought it would. <laughs> when you come to New Hampshire, you'll find like cheese, apple cider donuts, uh, lobster, stuff like that. All the surrounding states have claimed those. Maine claimed lobster, Vermont claimed the rest. So the only thing I could really find is boiled dinner, which is basically, it, I think it's typically corned beef or some sort of ham or a hearty meat, usually boiled with a root vegetable or potatoes and cabbage. So this is just uh, corned beef, which I believe is just like, uh, you know, salted. It's just like salt cured. So I'm gonna get a big old chunk of that, some of this mustard. Is that too much mustard? Is this gonna be spicy? 100%. Oh my God, okay, a little bit less mustard. Delicious corned beef boiled dinner for lunch. Mm. Surprisingly, a lot of flavor immediately. You know, for just being a boiled piece of meat, it's actually very tasty. It's really, there's no seasoning or anything on it. It's just the saltiness and the flavor of the meat. You know, it really just like falls right apart in your mouth. It's actually surprisingly delicious. That's right, y'all. It's map scratching time. We got a whopping four states to mark off, you guys. <laughs> I got my work cut out for me. It's kind of a lot of work, scratching these big states off. That was a lot of work. <laughs> and our map has also gotten a little bit more ripply because we've been storing it under our bed. I guess moisture just keeps getting to it, but we've literally got nowhere else to store it. <laughs> That's 10, 11, 12, 13, baby! Whoa, we're, we're almost there. through them now. <laughs> Technically, we drove through Pennsylvania, but we're not counting that. We just drove through that little sliver right there. <laughs> but we had a blast exploring New Hampshire and Vermont. The views were incredible. Sadly, all the fall foliage is gone, but we kind of prioritized New York for that, the Hudson Valley. If you missed that adventure, by the way, we'll link to it in the description and on the screen somewhere, but it was a lot of fun. So many freaking fall colors, it's insane. But we were very excited to get up to Maine and we were kind of racing up here because we want to explore this state before it gets too freaking cold. And the minute it starts really properly snoring, we is it snoring? <laughs> snoring? The minute that it starts properly snowing, which it should have been doing by now, we are going to hightail it way down here. <laughs> Run from the snow as quick as we possibly can. All right. G goodbye, adventurers. <laughs> we'll see you on the road. <laughs>